So this video we're looking at solving by factorization. So we're solving quadratic equations. Oh, sorry. Computer just a bit of lag there. Uh, solve by quadratic equations, and, and particularly we're going to solve it by factorizing. Okay. So let's look at question one to start with. And this question, sometimes I find these ones where the coefficient of uh, y squared or, or whatever it is, the quadratic coefficient, in this case 2, in this case 7, in this case 10, are bigger than 1, it sometimes becomes a little bit more tricky. So let's think. In my grid, I want to make 2y squared. And down here, I want to make plus 21. So instead of just having an x and x or a y and a y here, what I need to have is I need to have a 2y and a y in order to give me my y squared. And in order to give me my linear coefficient, or no, my linear coefficient, my apologies, the constant coefficient, the number term here, I've got to make 21. And there's a couple of different ways I can make 21 using multiply. I can either make it through that combination, or I can make it through a combination of 3 and 7, minus 3 and minus 7. Okay? So, um, let's think. Oh, if I multiply one of these numbers by 2y, not just y, then I'm going to get double. So if I'm using the 21, it's going to give me 42y, which is going to be way out. Or, just 21 and then adding on another 2y is going to give me 23. It's going to be too big. So I can eliminate those two right away. Let's think. Now, I really don't want to make positive 21, so either one of these is acceptable. But when I combine them together, when I combine these two linear terms together, I want to make 17. So if I've got negative, that's not going to help me. So I'm left with this. And I have to choose the correct way around. Because if I put the 3 up here, that's going to give me 6y. And then the 7 down here is going to give me 7y. That's not going to be enough. So I have to think carefully about which way around it goes. So let's just undo all of that. And let's put the 7 up here and the 3 down here, which is going to give me 3y and it's going to give me 14y. And when I combine those together, I get 17y. So a good way of factorizing is sometimes use the grid if you can't see it straight away. So I know I can factorize it, and it gives me 2y plus 3 in one bracket, and y plus 7 in the other bracket. And that's equal to 0. So I can solve it. That tells me that either 2y plus 3 is equal to 0, or y plus 7 is equal to 0. So in this case, y must be equal to minus 3 over 2. So subtract 3, divide by 2. Or my other answer is y has got to be minus 7. OK? So they're my two solutions. So I've factorized it, first of all, put it into double brackets, and then I've solved it. Let's look at the second one. Let's set up our grid again. And then we know it's got to be a multiply grid. This time I've got to make 7y squared and I've got to make plus 3 down here. Remember I want to be able to combine these two terms here. That tells me, same way, there's only one way of doing it, 7y and y. And to make plus 3, the only way combinations of doing it are 1 times 3 or minus 1 times minus 3. But I've got to think here, and look at my linear term here. My linear term here has got minus 10y. So I'm presumably going to use the negative ones. So when I combine them, it gives me a negative answer. So let's eliminate those. Again, I've got to choose the correct way around. If I put the 3, the minus 3 with the 7y, it's going to give me minus 21y here. It's too, too large in terms of its size. It's going to give me a minus 21y, which I'm not going to be able to get back. So let's pair the 3 up with here, and then let's put the minus 1 up here, see what we get. So we get minus 7y, and then minus 3y, which indeed does give us our that. 
gives our minus 10 y. So we can factorize it. Remember that one side of our grid is at one bracket. So we're told, oops, let's change color. So we're told that 7y minus 3, if I expand this with this second bracket, it's going to give me exactly the same as the question number 2 up here. So that tells me that 7y minus 3 is equal to 0, or minus 1 is equal to 0. Or, add 3 divided by 7, y is equal to 3 sevenths. Or, for this other alternative option, y is equal to 1. Let's go forward and do question 3, and then um, we'll leave 4 and 5 to the second part of the video, because um, they're slightly different, but let's look at question 3. So if I just skip on a page. Question 3 is a very similar setup. Then let's uh, get rid of that. So this is question number 3. This time we're making 10x squared here, and we're making minus 30 down here. Now the reason why this becomes, we're still combining these, the reason why this one becomes a little bit more tricky is because for 10x squared, it's no longer just going it likely to be 10 and 1x. Well, actually, we can make our life a little bit easier because we can spot something here. We could spot something. Before we try and factorise this, we could spot that actually without um, without making our life too difficult, we could divide everything by 5 because 5 goes into 5, 10 and 30. So actually, instead of having 10x squared plus 5x minus 30 equals 0, let's divide everything by 5. And it gives us 2x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0, and solving this instead. And that means that we don't have combinations to make 10x squared. We don't know whether it's x and 10 or 2x and uh, x and 10x or 2x and 5x. We actually, this, or actually it's much easier to solve that to make 2x squared and minus 6. And that means the only combination we can have is 2x and x. Now the reason we can do this is because we're, we've now, because we're solving it, we can make our life easier just by dividing. Like any equation, we can divide the left-hand side and the right-hand side by the same amount. In this case, I chose to divide by five, and zero divided by zero, zero divided by five just comes out as zero again. So we've made our life a little bit easier. So let's think: what are the combinations we can to make minus six? Well, to make minus six, we can have one and six. Oh, minus one and minus six and 1 and minus 6, be careful about that, and we can have 2 and minus 3, or minus 2 and 3. And we need to think about the combinations. I only want to make a single x here, so presumably if I've got 6 in here, if I double the 6, or even with it, if I only multiply it by the 1 here, it's going to be too big. So let's eliminate both of these first. I'm trying to make a coefficient, linear coefficient of 1. So it's one of these two. And I think, well, I'm trying to make plus 1. Well, so if I doubled the 2x and then subtracted 3x, that's going to give me 1x, isn't it? So that means that the plus 2 has got to go up here and the minus 3 has got to go down there. So that gives me 4x here, minus 3x. Okay? So that was just by kind of thinking about it smart. So now I basically I've reduced the problem to this. Oh, that's nice. Positive failure. This is, someone's now following me on Twitter. Isn't that interesting? Um, I've now got 2x minus 3, and I've got x plus 2 here in my brackets. So either or x plus 2 is equal to 0. So add 3 divided by 2 x is equal to 3 over 2, that's a 3, or x is equal to minus 2, and they're my solutions. So they all followed a very similar pattern, questions 1, 2, and 3, all followed a very similar, tried to use a grid, question 3 we made our life a little bit easier, okay, that's why it was worth one more mark. 
let's, let's stop the video here and then with part two we'll look at how to solve questions four and five because they're slightly different or they're similar. There's a slightly different approach and you need to spot something special about them.